some hair that's a bit staticky. Oh. Um, and we've got a, a backlight on. Yeah, that's better. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Thank you. There we go. Excellent. Awesome. Am I doing all right? Yeah. yeah. So your hair's yeah. a bit staticky. I can't as Hi. Look, <laughs> you've done these cool animation episodes, and I was entirely, I should have, I mean, I knew that was going to happen, and I don't know why I didn't prepare for it. I don't know why I didn't do. You have got another very jazzy gradient, though. That's got <laughs> multiple colours in. Yeah. You know, when there's someone who makes up for not having a personality by wearing a crazy t-shirt, I feel like that's what I'm doing here. Are you making fun of my trousers, Jake? They are very jazzy. <laughs> anyway, my episode is called Dom Ready Events <laughs> Considered Harmful. Interesting. Um, I, get, I, I thought it was about time I do a Considered Harmful one, uh -huh. you know? Um, and, and, and this is. See, I feel like you're newer to the web than I am. Yes. In that I am like 500 years old in mm -hmm. web years. That's pretty safe. And, and I'm almost afraid to ask you whether you recognize this. N not hugely, no. <sighs> okay. What is this? <laughs> this is, so this by not hugely, I mean no. <laughs> so this is like all code on the web at some point would look like this because this is jQuery, mm -hmm. and specifically this is you pass a function into the, the dollar variable, and what it would do is it would run that function at DOM ready time, and this this is how it all worked. Um, later on, we got this, which is yep. uh, yeah. Oh, right. Okay, we're up to I'm date with you. now. I'm Excellent. With you. <laughs> uh, I, there's a, actually, this is a sort of this event has been around a long time. It, it kind of dates itself by the way it's written, in that there was a, a weird few years where standards folks decided that all events should have DOM at the start of them, and they should be case sent well, uppercase and lowercase, and all this. So we don't do that anymore. So this is kind of a relic. But yeah, this I think this first appeared in Firefox. Uh, and then in the other browsers, a nice standard way of, of, of saying, like, tell me when the, the DOM is all ready and stuff. Um, but don't. It's got a big problem. And I would say if anyone is using DOM ready stuff, be it the actual official um, event or like the jQuery equivalent or anything like that, I think we need to stop doing it. This is worrying because I see a lot of people doing this for animation. Like a lot. That's good, because I do want to talk specifically about animation ready stuff. Interesting. In a, in a bit. Um, first up, here's the problem that I've seen. Um, so, in this example, this is a kind of JavaScript y page. So, there's nothing going on in the DOM apart from like one element, and then the, the bundle is going to load and do stuff with uh, the element. Not my ideal way of building stuff, but mm -hmm. it's, it's how a lot, a lot of stuff is built. Um, but the performance is, for this is, is actually generally fine. Um, it's not unexpectedly bad. It's, it's as fast as it's written to be. But what I see in the wild is pe people deploy a bit of code like this and then later add something like this. Or their CDN adds it for them. Oh. And this suddenly changes the performance profile of the code because that DOM content loaded code is going to happen after that analytics script runs and that analytics script is on another server so you're now you're even though you've done the right thing by having your script on the same origin so you can all use the single http2 connection you're now delayed by this other unrelated script and all of the connection stuff so every now and then when i do these kind of episodes um there'll be a guy in the comments will say Huh, this episode could have just been 30 seconds if you just told me the answer. And I don't, <laughs> it's not what this is about, right? I can't, I'm, and so I'm going to talk around like some of the history of this, how it happens, the spec, and some other ways of getting around it. But I thought just for that guy, uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll address him directly, that guy, right? Don't use Dom Ready. Use Defer. Bye. Bye bye. Okay, now the adults can talk, uh -huh. <laughs> um, and we can they talk about why this actually happens, like specifically why like defer actually solves this problem. Have you used defer on scripts before? Yep. 
Um, I thought I'd have a look at how, like, how it works. And in order to do that, we'll take a look at the spec. Uh, there's a lovely section of the spec called the end. <laughs> it's, it's the end of the story, or specifically, it's the end of the parsing story. This is in the parsing section of the spec. Um, there's a lot of fun language in here, like spin the event loop, which sounds like a great game show. Um, it's actually very old spec language. We don't write it like that anymore. We're not going to read it like this, but I'll distill it down to some of the, the, the rough stuff that happens. First up, the document's ready state becomes interactive. And this is a thing. You've got document.ready state. It starts off as loading, and then it becomes interactive. And you get an event when that changes. This is an old Internet Explorer API, which has since been standardized because it's because it's quite useful. Um, and then we wait for the style sheets to load. That work parts are inserted, and the media matches. So no, not like print style sheets, just like ones that apply to the actual screen. Mm -hmm. um, so you would you wouldn't use that ready state change as your DOM ready thing because quite often like you you want to wait for the styles and stuff. Yeah. Um, so uh, the next thing that happens is it waits for all of the defer scripts to run in order, and then you get this DOM content loaded event, and that's why we had the problem before. If you're waiting for DOM content loaded, it's going to put you after all of these defer scripts. And you wouldn't think it would be in that order, would you? I wouldn't think it would be in that order, at least. Yeah. I guess it's that thing is if you've got like, well, we've already now got three things on there that mean DOM ready. Mm -hmm. And they've got to happen in some order. <laughs> it just so happens that this is the, the order that happened. Um, next thing, it waits for pretty much everything that triggered a request, images, iframes, that kind of stuff. And then the ready state becomes complete. We get a load event. It's the window load event. So that's why that's, you know, you don't use that as your DOM ready because that's after all of the images, after all of that stuff. And then the page show event, which is bad. I hate this part of the spec because the user's been looking at the page for some time now. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, all of the images have loaded, and that this can be like 30 seconds, a minute away on a slow connection. And then you get the page show event. It doesn't mean what it says. Doesn't mean what it says. And it's especially annoying as in some of the work I'm doing right now, we kind of think, oh, we kind of need an API to you know, tell the developer when we've started rendering. And they're like, oh, page show. That's great. No, it's like half an hour too late. You like know? a first meaningful paint event. Exactly. So we're probably going to have to end up with something like that because the, the right named thing is in the wrong place. But whatever. Anyway, tangent. Defer is really, really good. It's what we use mostly now for all of this stuff rather than DOM ready. Because you can have the things in order, you've got the dependencies, the bundle, and so your bundle script can run knowing that the dependencies have loaded before it. It loads knowing that the DOM is all there. It's so good, in fact, that module scripts are defer by default. I did not know that. So you might ask, why did we ever have these DOM ready events? Like, what? You know, why were they a historical artifact, and especially at why are they coming back when? We've got this lovely defer thing, which does the job properly. And you might think, like, well, it's it's because of some browser support reason. Uh, but we had defer in 1997 in Internet Explorer 4. This is an old, old feature. But there was a bug. Mm -hmm. And here's what the bug looked like. We've got two deferred scripts here. We've got one JS, two JS. Here's one JS. It's going to log one. It's going to get a paragraph. It's going to change the paragraph. It's going to log two. And then that second script is going to log three. Mm -hmm. Now, the correct logging order for this? One, two, three. Yeah, like numbers. Go. Yep. What order do you think Internet Explorer 4 does? No, I'll give you a clue. It's mad. T two, one, three. That, do you know what you're thinking? Along the Too right mad. level of madness. <laughs> let's, let's get, I was worried you might say like three one two, like the, in, in like it would just maybe run those scripts in a different order. But no, you're right. It's way more mad than that. The actual order is a one, three, no, two. Why? Why is a good question, and I don't fully know. I my suspicion is this is where it goes wrong. Now, the, the whole idea behind the, the first scripts run on like DOM ready. Mm -hmm. Another way of saying that is 
when the parser stops. Now, what I think happened is inner HTML, it, it triggers like a, a second instance of the parser. So I think what happens is you use inner HTML, that second instance of the parser ends, and it ends up like kind of two levels deep on running the deferred scripts. So at that point, it runs the rest of the deferred scripts. Oh, that's so it, not good. It is not good. And a lot of code at the time was doing stuff with inner HTML to kind of test the browser's capabilities. So this was just bad. It meant we couldn't use defer for a while, uh, in fact. So let's play a game. This is a yes, no quiz. Uh -huh. All right. I'm ready. Was this fixed in the year 1999? No. In no, correct. Was this fixed in the new millennium, the year 2000, in IE 5.5? Going to go for no again. Correct. Was this fixed in the year 2001 in Internet Explorer 6? Oh, going to go for no. Correct. Now, they had a few <laughs> years here. 2006 with Internet Explorer 7. Was this bug fixed? They've done a logo update, but mm -hmm. going to go with no again? Correct. And finally, in 2009, was this fixed in IE8? Hopefully, yes. Nope. Oh. Was this fixed in T11 <laughs> in IE9? No again. Nope. <laughs> Nihilism but, has kicked in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this was fixed in 2012 uh, in IE10. That is 15 years. That's a long time. 15 years for a, a seriously important bug. So, like, I know you know we complain about you know browsers not shipping a feature in a year these days. This, I mean, this is the bad old days. Say, you know, you know, Microsoft have a completely changed company now in terms of browsers. Back hit, it was, it was really bad time uh, for waiting for this important bit of code to be fixed for 15 years. And I would say even then it took longer to fix because some of those old versions of IE had a long tail. Mm. So I think that's why we, we didn't use it for so long. So yeah, use defer now. That is the right thing to use if you want the whole page to be ready. But defer isn't always ideal. Um, and I would say in, in this kind of situation. And I want to talk about, I think the animation example is a really good one. If you've got a page with like a load of content on it, mm. then you don't, especially if maybe some content lower down has a, a database connection it needs to do. So maybe like the bottom of the footer takes a while. You don't really want that to delay all of the animations happening. So the solution here is to go async and do something like this, where we've, you know, instead of defer, but the async attribute doesn't have to be a module. But the handy thing about modules is if you want to load your dependencies for that script, it's a, a much nicer system. And this is just going to run whenever it's ready. So as soon as the script loads, off it goes, it'll execute. Uh, so it doesn't have to wait for DOM ready. You can get stuff working much earlier uh, mm -hmm. in the lifetime of the page. One problem we have with this is historically, or, or for the you know currently on the web, a lot of the scripts that use async are things like analytics, and uh, or less important scripts. And so browsers have kind of went, well, if it's async, Just push it to the back of the key. Yeah, we'll get to it eventually. Mm. Who, who who really cares? Uh, which is a problem with this. Yeah, if we're using it intentionally to run earlier, this is bad. There's a new feature that has just landed in Chrome where you can say, I want this to be high priority, please. Thank you That's very much. Cool. Um, but that is just in, in Chrome right now. A more cross browser way is to add a preload for it. Uh, it's kind of weird having a script and a, a preload like maybe in the same place, but it does bump the priority of it. Mm -hmm. It signals that it is a, a more important script. But that leaves the problem of, if our, our script might load before the DOM is there. I mean, you, you have no control. Which isn't useful when you're doing animation stuff. Like You need the elements there to be able to move them around. Exactly. So the idea is, like, can we have some sort of targeted version of this DOM ready? Like, can, I, can you tell me when that particular element is there? Uh, and I reckon web components are one of the ah. best ways of handling this. Uh, so here, here's a definition of a, a custom element. Uh, and you get these, well, you get a constructor for it, which is when the element is created. But you get these connected and disconnected callbacks for when it goes into the document and when it comes out of the document. And which one of those you use kind of 
depends. Most stuff that's on the DOM already is dependent on connection is when it does its thing. So if you create a script element, um, give it a source, it does nothing. But then when you put it in a document, that's when it will start doing all of the processing. Mm -hmm. uh, image elements are one of the few that does it the other way around. If you create an image element, uh, it will start downloading even before you put it in the, in the document. But yeah, that's, that's different from most other stuff. So quiz time. I should say, all of these questions like, are stuff that I, I'm asking you because I got it wrong. Right? So <laughs> I just say, don't worry if you get it wrong. And you know, watching at home, don't worry if you get this stuff wrong. What is this going to log with the example at the top there? Hello? That is a decent guess. Um, the answer is it depends. It will yeah. sometimes be hello. It, in this case, it because our script is loading async, it depends on the order that these two things happen. If the element appears and then our script loads, it will log hello. Mm -hmm. If the script loads first, it will log nothing empty. And the reason for this is the parser kind of choose through the, you know, as it's receiving all the HTML, it choose for it character by character. It sees the angle bracket my dash e l e m t close bracket, and it goes ha. Found a new element, and it creates it there and then, and it knows where to put it in the document, so it puts it in the document, and then that's when all of our you know we get a constructor and are connected, and then it goes to the H E L L O X, and it's like oh I found some stuff to put in the element, so by the time our connected stuff happens, you've got nothing. That's frustrating. Yeah, it's it's interesting because this is how most elements in the DOM work, like. It, as it's, uh, let's talk about uh, a select element. Mm -hmm. Like as your select element is parsing, like as soon as it gets that select, it will add it to the page, and then as it gets each option, then it starts adding it. Or most elements in the DOM are designed to yeah, like build themselves up as the element builds up, because there's uh, there isn't really a, a concept on the web of this element is complete because it can always change. That's very true. So I get, I guess the point I'm making is. Once you're in the, the world of creating HTML elements directly, you've got to deal with the same sort of stuff that real HTML elements have to have to deal with. Um, if you don't want to do that, here's a hack that I've used before that made web component people very unhappy. <laughs> um, I just pop this at the end of the, the thing. So what this means is I'll have my custom element. I will get a connected event for this one. Um, and it doesn't it doesn't matter if my because once your script loads it will and you register your elements it will go and see if there's any in the document that haven't been enhanced yet it will give you events for those and then as further ones load in it will give you events for those as well and all I'm using this is a little flag because I as soon as that's parsed I know that all the content is in the carousel that's very clever and it's ready to go as I say it makes a bit hacky but I like I I love I love hacks. I do like. I think the custom elements people feel like it's, uh, you know, it's an insult to their work that I'm just using it as a kind of like, tell me when this appears, please, and I don't care about the innards of it. It's just like a flag. Mm. But, like I say, if you want to be like a real HTML element, you need to react to changes in your DOM over time. Um, custom elements have thing like in the shadow DOM. There's like slots and slot change things, but the nicely low level way of doing it is these things. These are mutation observers. And these are things that you, you can add to your document, and it will tell you when stuff changes. Like um, It's really useful. So here I'm saying, like I'm a, I want to observe the document body. I want to know when its childless changes, and I want to know when that happens for everything that's inside the body as well. Uh, and it's yeah, just a great way of knowing something changed, go and you know do something about it. So like, if you're you could not use custom elements at all and just add this to the, the, the document and wait for elements to arrive that you want to enhance, want to start animating like, as, as, soon yeah. as, as soon as possible. There's a gotcha here, which caught me out. Um, and I've seen catch other people out as well. So and it's this. If you create, so I'm going to create a div. I'm going to put another div inside it. And I'm going to add that to the body. What does this log and how many times? 
should only log once that's when correct. you touch the body. Yes. Yeah, but it doesn't. No, 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 you're correct. That's oh, OK. It. No, I, I have seen so much code that is written like this that assumes, and I've, I've made this mistake before, um, that because it's got subtree true, that it's going to tell you like all the stuff that's inside the thing that's that's added. Mm. But you're right, there is only one mutation, mutation here. Mutation, because the div isn't in the DOM. To exactly. Start off with. Um, whereas if you do that, then two. That is now two mu yeah. separate mutations. Yeah, and that stuff's got me out before. And I guess what it calls a mutation is is like a command that you've done directly. So you've called dot append, so that's a single mutation. If you call append with two divs, I think it counts that as a single mutation. Mm -hmm. But the you know, mutation of mutations will happen twice, because it will give you both of them at once. So yeah, if you're wanting to write like a low-level way of, of dealing with like things as they arrive, this is the way to do it. But make sure when stuff gets added to the DOM, you're not just checking that element that's been added. You need to check to see inside uh, if there's anything else you need to add. So I guess that's it, really. Um, make sure you use defer as the baseline thing. Don't use DOM ready anymore, because um, it's only going to slow you down. But if you've got like a big page full of content, and you want to enhance that stuff as soon as possible, even before DOM ready. Custom elements are a great way of doing it. Uh, but if you want a super low level way of doing it, there's mutation observers. Plus, that sounds cool. Mutation observer. It does, doesn't it? Does. We're at. Do you like mutation observer? Mutation observer. Mutation. Mutation. Mutation.